order, which is uh, the standard open of the statement. This is an attempt at conservation commission uh, for the 14th of November, 2019. The commission is a group of unpaid volunteers and works to protect the natural environment of Northampton. We are concerned with the eight interests that find the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, and we also enforce the Northampton City Wetlands Ordinance. We are very aware that it's consistent with the open meaning law requirements or date, times, and gender support for the advance. They may involve public comment during our meetings. However, we ask the public to limit the kind of solutions that we have on our purview. Today, we are at the continuation of the notice of intent for uh, construction of the five million apartment building on uh, Maple Avenue uh, and a continuation of the notice of intent for the electric driveway construction within the buffer zone on West Hampton Road, and approval for the uh, open space acquisition in the Sonia Hills, uh, and the discussion of uh, land use regulations, and uh, a couple of other uh, discussion items. Uh, first, we have, uh, well, first let me ask if the yes was being recorded, and let me ask if there's any general public comment apart from anything having to do with the specific case. Uh, if not, the uh, first item will be approval of minutes from April 25th. I'm not quite sure why I put this to the, to the April minute. There, there was actually, I missed one, so I had to go back. Uh -huh. uh, but it looks okay to me. Uh, it doesn't matter if it goes back that far. We don't think we've got to have a problem with this. Uh, anybody see any amendments or modifications to those minutes? And if not, a motion to approve. Okay, motion to approve. And a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So good. Um, the first case is a notice of intent for construction of the five unit apartment building, uh, parking lot, and associated stormwater work. This is 25 years old. Good to see you all again. I'm Terry Reynolds, Reynolds Engineering. Scripture um, Tom Gu, Kim Jen. Um, and last time we we spoke, um, the commission members wanted to get out and see the site. So at this point, I assume everybody has generally been able to get out and see and confirm for themselves what, what it is. Um, so we're we're looking at this site in terms of uh, redevelopment. Um, and as we discussed before, it's currently degraded due to lack of topsoil through the majority of the site. Um, the proposed uh, improvements, you know, proposed development on the site uh, ends up uh, ending up with a net uh, decrease of the degraded area, about 7,000 square feet, uh, with significant plantings and loaming uh, of the degraded area, along with required tree replacements uh, due to the removal of two trees, uh, a 24 inch um, walnut, or hickory rather, and, and then a very large sycamore. So uh, with that, I guess, um, Talk again about the project, but I think everybody heard last time. Um, the, uh, the useful, since we're now uh, uh, a month or so away from that last discussion, we would talk about the uh, uh, replication. Mm -hmm. So um, we have a restoration area that is basically um, going to be loamed and seeded, and, and then with um, a mixture of shrubs and trees be planted in here. Um, currently, uh, under the tree ordinance, and uh, for replacing, you know, the the diameter of these trees that have to be removed, um, there's a number of uh, small um, sapling trees that are being planted. Uh, at this point, I have eight um, sapling trees along with. Um, I believe I've got uh, eight other larger trees being planted in the site here. 
Uh, in addition to that, there's numerous shrubs in here. There's quite a few shrubs that will fill in the ground cover in here, which really have not been able to because the surface out there is generally all clay. Um, so hopefully we can establish a better understory uh, growing in that area. Um, to, to prepare, because uh, I, I, I went out there while the leaves were still up in the air too after I last year and I took a lot of pictures of uh, the surfaces, which is indeed all clay and whatnot. I would have to put in there back in the 30s or something. Yeah, yeah, whenever, you know, that. But very little was actually growing out of a few major things. But yeah, there, there, there isn't any really good sort of perennials in there. There's a lot of jewel weed that comes in, um, that sort of thing. So this would establish more, a much more better habitat what situation. What kind of preparation do you have to do to the surface? Itself? Well, at this point, I mean, there's, there's not. It's, it would be very difficult to remove all the clay. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, basically, we're proposing six inches of, of loam deep on top. put on top. Yeah, and that, that'll help retain moisture in, in, in the area. It's not going to be perfect, doesn't pull out, or, you know, it's still not going to infiltrate very well. Right. Um, but it will hold the moisture better, um, and, and it will reduce the runoff when directly off the site. So, um, in addition to that, um, there was some concern about, you know, the amount of canopy loss. Um, so, you know, we went out and did a tree count. There, there is a significant amount of other trees here. Um, I went out and actually counted all the trees. There were 67 trees out there, six inches and larger. Um, and we're removing two of those. Um, the remaining trees range anywhere from six to 30 inches uh, in diameter. So, and for everybody that's been out there, I, mean, I think you probably saw it. There's a fair amount. It is a, a massive and attractive sycamore that I think could probably represent around 12 to 15 percent of the canopy cover of the city. Yeah, it's a piece, but it's not. It's a piece, and it, it's a shame. And you know, we really tried to work around not trying to, not having to remove it, and just because it really, it's the zoning really just sort of hemmed in the area that could be worked with, and really couldn't get away from. And that other tree on the southeast, uh, the front porch tree, this one in particular is listed as an ash. Yeah, that's that was an error. It, it, it's a, uh, I believe it's a, a, a again, it's a kind of hickory. Um, so. Other questions from the committee? Are we going to do uh, invasive control around the planned area? Yeah, uh, there's you know there's not a huge amount, but there's there's some limited. Um, English ivy. What's that? English ivy. Poison ivy. No, English ivy. Oh, <laughs> oh, that this in this yeah, yeah. back area. No, I, I, English ivy. I don't know. Are you talking about like the ground cover yeah, back there? Yeah, yeah. This is English ivy. Yeah. Um, we're now proposing to pull out the ground cover. That, because there is a nice bed of established stuff I didn't know it was invasive though. Um, I don't know that I would be great to pull it all out. It's really actually holding very well. Um, uh, but certainly bittersweet, multi floor rows, any of that stuff. Um, we could talk about it if that's something that needs to go. How far, how far does the degraded soil go? Uh, well, it kind of starts in here and goes all the way out the whole peninsula. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and generally the whole site, there, there used to be a, um, I was just showing the paint. It used to be a dike back in 1916. Um, and it looks like basically over the years that it was filled. Um, they extended the dike, basically, and filled it over the dike. Um, if you're interested. But in 1916, I have a map of uh, what it was originally. So when the river actually ran through there, when they moved out of it. So there were the dikes here, 
Um, and we've got parking lot basically right here. Yeah. So the the majority of the site is all um, filled with the sand and brick and gravel. Um, I have not seen this type of structure before. Can you explain um, a little bit about the fourth century ages? Yeah, ba basically, are, are you familiar with septic systems? Um, so they have the chambered septic systems, infiltrators are, are kind of the, the known one that most a lot of people use. These are very similar to that. They're just a much larger version of that. They're meant for storm water, much bigger volumes. Um, so these these are the... Um, this is like a meter Um, you're asking about the subsurface structures? No, the, the board century. Type oh, the board century. Oh, that's a water quality unit. It's, yeah, a, it's a sediment. It, it uses quiescent sediment. So basically, the idea is on your low flows, when you're getting all that sediment transfer, you have your stormwater come in, and it just slowly swirls around, and the fines drop into the bottom. Okay. Uh, as opposed how, how to. Easy to is it to maintain these things? Oh, with a standard okay. suction tube. Okay. Yeah. And that was included in the old one. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's a grade, of, it's a downgrade from the finish site. Yeah. How so. So, well, the parking lot itself and the building are being collected in the stormwater system. Yeah. The remaining land generally goes in this direction. Okay. You have the uh, line of erosion control that will probably going to extend at just past the you know, home. Yeah, this is intended to be out on the edge of where it's being low. Okay. I'm going to plan that it doesn't show it out that far. Yeah, yeah, it's been revised since. Yeah, that was just an oversight. Um, so. Other questions from commissioners? What trees are you applying to plant? Um, trees are proposed. Um, we have uh, horn beam, American horn beam. And then over here we have black gum. Uh, and then the smaller ones are going to be black gum, quaking aspen, white pine, and balsam fir. So the hemlock, uh, the hemlock, they have been removed. The hemlock and ash have been removed. Yeah. And is, are any of these in the region that have big mold in the area? Yeah, the smaller ones are, are going to be, these are, are specified to be placed by the landscape architect okay. uh, in, in this area. You don't have a plan to plan for that? No, not, not specifically, no. The, the landscape architect um, is to be out there, and if that's in the notes, that, that can mm -hmm. be on site. Uh, yeah, we put a condition that Sarah has to mm -hmm. improve what they would like. So yeah. And as far as the storm water system, I, I oversee or I'll observe the installation of that to make sure that we have proper material and the infiltration part of it and so on. What's the uh, construction timetable for this? Uh, we'll be looking at spring. Uh, it's probably about a six month project. And, and the, the if there was some concern expressed about this having been an industrial site that might be uh, contaminating some of the soil in the test um, pitch. No, it isn't. The, the concern isn't about it being an industrial site. It's because there is a coal tar plume that comes from this direction and heads underground. Uh, this property here, they've done some borings that have it down about 18 feet. Um, and these guys have a restriction that uh, I believe uh, 
Berkshire Gas or, or I forget, Columbia Gas um, has to be notified if there's any digging below 15 feet. Um, there hasn't been an agreement that's that's being worked out with these guys' lawyer with Columbia Gas to come out and put the uh, use restriction on this property, but we expect it will be very similar. Um, the, and what's the deepest you're going to have to go? Uh, the deepest is maybe six feet, eight feet at max. Uh, there's been talk of maybe putting basements on here. That would make it about eight feet. The infiltration unit's only about six feet. Yeah. And it was it was cited where it is because this is where the original soil comes to exist. <coughs> There, it appears that right at the corner of the proposed building, there's a, a, a zoning line between two different categories. Is that a, um, is urban residential suit or is real thing to get in the bill? Uh, is the, the that's the special concern. The building's going to be located. Any other questions, comments, or questions? Questions or comments from the public? Seems not. Uh, motion to close the hearing. So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I think the exchanges of the We've collected since that first hearing the uh, issues raised by uh, the, the Butters and then uh, the uh, engineer that uh, was hired by, uh, I think, by the presented the report uh, have been addressed in terms of either can be modified or be explained as not problematic in my sense. So the staff recommendation um, is that, uh, that we want to ensure that invasive species removal and control uh, plans are uh, monitored, that there be a three season uh, growth requirement for any certificate of uh, compliance can be issued uh, and if any of the significant things that died in the engine and be replaced because of the certificate can be issued uh, that uh, the planting of as proposed uh, is not specific but that uh, it's coordinated with Sarah uh, before it is actually completed. Any other additional conditions besides standard conditions? Yeah. There was mention of a prohibited uh, future alteration within the woodland restoration area. Uh, I don't know how that's accomplished, but yes. Um, mm -hmm. Should that be a, 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 a deeded uh, so that, change? So that gets recorded as an ongoing condition. As an ongoing condition mm -hmm. attached to the deed. Yeah. The yeah. And we'll record a copy of this. Mm -hmm. So the re restoration is there, it has to be a, a permanent restoration. It can't be done by a future owner. So, we're going to invasive species. Would it require a plan? Excuse me. If, I'm uh, sorry. You missed the public comment because I was trying to find a bathroom. Ah. I wonder if I could just ask a question. Um, hmm. Officially, no, we're, we're closed. Um, and once you close the hearing, and so we'll make an exception. Oh, open meeting law requirements of. Got it. We'll make an exception. Um, it isn't, isn't it? It's not particularly complicated. Uh, 
I'd like to address the question you asked. Oh, I live in the Medical Place for and um, I talked to the folks in the county area, and uh, they said that the your building, that if you go to the, the road, the, the access road, there's an open area presently that has a gravel area to park, and the building is sort of on the right hand side of that, mm -hmm. working its way back. And then there's a uh, couple lines in our back line, it's <laughs> somewhere back there. Do we abut rent a place for me? You wouldn't know that maybe, perhaps. You don't know who owns the abutting land? There's a random place, it's a butt that's a, a, a little butt there. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's a bunch of trees between our. Uh, are you thinking about any trees? The, the, the trees that are, there's only two trees that are coming down, and it's two significant trees. I right. haven't heard about that. So, but all the, all the growth back there, the trees behind the that all stays. That all stays. Okay, that's my question. Thank you very much. Okay. For the chat. Sure. Um, so, a planning plan uh, or a, uh, a basics plan. Can you monitor for somewhere for your period? Or yeah, for, at least for the for the um, restoration area. For the restoration before, also before a certificate of compliance would be granted. Does that make sense to you, sir? Yes. So the same two-year monitoring period. Any other conditions? I was just wondering about the new and program requirements. Are, it has nothing to do with us. But it's it's a, a, yeah, so the uh, underground injection control is a PDP program to make sure that aquifers and groundwater are being maintained. Anything else? If not, uh, Barry, you've captured that so we don't have to reiterate it. Oh. Um, but we also okay. want to make that as a uh, motion. So mm -hmm. Motion. To approve with those standard conditions and Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yes. So moved. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Next item is a continuation of the notice of intent to the residential driveway construction on West Hampton Road. And the applicant has requested to a continuation until December 12th. Thank you. So we won't open the hearing. We just uh, make a motion for uh, continuation to December 12th at 6 p.m. So moved. And the second? Second. One in favor? There. I am. Yeah. Yeah. So moved. So 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 oh, you're in there. Yeah, I want to be sure because that's the thing. Can I ask you to continue any discussion out in the hall so we can continue that meeting? Thank you. Uh, so Sarah, we have uh, so many of those open space items. Yeah. Uh, so I included in the um, small map of the area that we're looking to acquire the right. back of the staff report. Right. Um, so the yellow, the green background is areas that have already been protected by the city. Um, you get your uh, uh, yeah. No, yesterday. Who's yeah. 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 the staff report? Just the uh, yeah. 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 the last page was yeah. the yeah. 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 So what are these streets? How, how do you get uh, So Sylvester Road is to the west. Uh -huh. uh, Spring Street is to the east. Oh, the Spring. Spring, uh, Spring Street is the one that's going up. You can see the ice house there. Ice house. Yep. Oh, oh. Yeah, that's Charter. Yeah. Oh, Charter. Okay. So this is twenty thousand um, dollars for twenty acres. $15,000 is coming from a private donor, and $5,000 is uh, being paid by back taxes. So it's not actually possible. All right, and it's a, uh, what you described it a little bit. It's, I assume it's similar to the uh, It is. It's, I 
think a lot of people are already doing it like part of the Trump Reach area. It has a sense of trail network. A lot of hiking is just not recycling and current. There's a enjoy the street. Mm -hmm. How big is it? 28. This was a leftover wood lot. Uh, it's someone who lives in the area and has done this for prior purchase. Oh, that's nice. Nice. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Any more her? Um, seems like it's kind of moving right now. Yeah. Uh, about three. Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Opposed? So further. Get more of those. Yeah. We try. <laughs> we, we like to be successful. <laughs> um, and the next item is. <laughs> yes, are they wanting to be anonymous? Uh, yes. Okay. How about a plaque? Um, land use regulations. Uh, so the update on that that I have, I think we want to maybe talk about dogs. I don't know if it's in the context of the land use regulations. We've got the coalition to talk about a few times. Um, the dogs and hunting are yeah. the two things so, that usually come up around the So we are coming close to a final acquisition on the Augusta parcel in the Mineral Hills, and the, the seller is required and hunting is not allowed on that property. Because it's, it's historically been allowed. Yes, it has. It, it had, he's, he's always hunted there, and he wants to make sure that that activity continues. Um, so we, we won't be able to acquire the property if, if, if we don't. Um, and the other one that we were thinking about is historic funding in the Rocky Hill area. Um, yeah, and we haven't specifically talked about the golf course, but they may seem to include that as well. Uh, that, that has been funded in the past, and we will be hopefully planting significant number of trees and also hunting in the area. Golf course would be a great place to do forestation. Yes, yeah. we're working on that. We've, we've applied for some grants. There's this whole climate control thing that we can get now sent out to all of the departments and try to come up with this stuff. Um, that would be great. And Solar already has a network of paths. It does. Hmm? Solar already has a network of trails. So yeah, my mother. Solar is a missive and all kinds of stuff. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, we can get free copies and distribute them. That's it. It doesn't cost anything. It's, uh, you oh, you're, you're, you're all about it. Is that available online as well? I meant to look, but I, I did not know. I don't know. He, he sent the letter with the, the thing that said you need copies to distribute. Just huh. give them the yo. And so it doesn't cost anything. Um, good. Well, we, what we've said before um, is that uh, uh, we would review parcel by parcel uh, consideration of uh, hunting, and it would base our decision primarily on historic use. Uh, so, in this case, if uh, the master parcel is uh, contingent upon us. Respecting historic use and allowing the continuation of hunting, that's a discussion we've already had. And, uh, anybody got any problems with uh, uh, authorizing the continuation of the closure of that field based on the you know, yes, we will allow uh, historic use? Well, so I, think, I think that's a great uh, way to experiment with. How the hunting goes, and you know, getting the public on board with what's possible on these kind of sites. So I think it's, it's worth 
to have that option available and see how it works out for the city user. Yeah, well, that's how we're going to treat the new tenant as well. Yeah, the Rocky. Yeah, the Is there, on, on that property acquisition, were there any, I mean, are there any restrictions on that thing? I mean, at all at the point in time? Well, the state? Yeah, the state. Is it the state? On, on the private parking? Yeah. No. I mean, you might limit it to the parking space. Oh, okay. But, no, no, but I mean. Yeah, up to, up to the land. So with the BK with conservation land, we have no say over what kind of hunting or different types of I, types of animals or seasons or anything like that sort. I don't know actually. I don't. He, he made it very clear that hunting was important to him. Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if um, he's interested in, in shotgun hunting or you know, if building. You know, that's something we're looking at. Yeah, I, I guess that would be the the contingency. If you look at the, uh, the Commonwealth hunting regulations. There's some hunting around all, you know, if you're shooting rabbits and squirrels and stuff, you can shoot them all the time. And I think we would, we would want to be strict. So the public use without, you know, if it's near season, sure, there's going to be hunting, but uh, other uh, normal, and maybe we did the birds and stuff until we could add a few weeks during the year, but there would be other weeks that the public would not have to want to go hiking there if that's not a hunting season. I think that would be our wish if we bring high ball and say, no, wide open, nothing, uh, no constraints. It's just so so remind me what parcel this is. Uh, so the, you know the, the llamas live on West Farms Road, yeah. or used to live? It's yeah. the rear of that parcel. Oh, oh, going up the hill there. Yep. Okay. Okay. I suspect we hear what they yeah, I yeah. guess. Well, we did get a call about squirrels. We're working on bigger than squirrels. That was a first. <laughs> <laughs> My dog hunts squirrels. <laughs> squirrels are good eating. Really? Eat a lot. I don't even have it. Yeah. Somebody gave me white meat pizza. Okay, so I'll, uh, yeah, I'll look into that and then plan through it. Conceptually, yes, but we would want to have. Uh, some limitations so that there are times when the public would know that no hunting is going to happen. If something is deer and maybe one or two types of uh, 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 bird, then it would be fine. But, uh, so let, let us know that before we have to okay. make a, a formal vote. Actually, easier to deal with the hunting issue than it is with the dog issue. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't think they could both solve each other if we came up with a great solution. <laughs> Open season for dogs. Open season for the planting of dogs. Uh, oh, no, no, okay. Just kidding. Just joke. I know. I don't put that in. We're being sure it's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dogs recently because there were oh, yeah. wonderful ideas. Yeah, I'm looking for well, some ideas. Some of you probably have to go to the city council. Yeah, and, and that's really separate from the, the land use regulation discussion because we currently don't allow. Right, it's already not allowed. Right. Expect to have a work to have a place. Yeah, there's, there's, there's actually, besides the fine for dogs that are running along without a leash, there's also a fine for dogs pooping in a public place and nobody picks it up. So, so the $20. Well, they pick it up and put it in the bag and leave the bag outside yeah. of the bag. Yeah. yeah, I'm just saying it's just a specific for picking up after your dog or it's $20 fine round. Well, there's um, some question of having the animal control officer periodically um, visit, uh, I think this came up during the 
extremely discussion. Uh, and I don't know if she has a comment about whether the computer is to be stuck by and uh, how visible she is. One thing to have to say on that. Uh, and I know people watch it. Uh, uh, I don't know if it's a small American you know, from Federal Street to uh, where that is. Oh, no, it's part of the property. It's part of the property, yeah. They wanted to have everybody know that their dog should be under control, but they themselves could let the dog out of their own backyard. So, uh, it's a little bit different. It would be worth doing a picture of like the locks and spikes where the animal control officer was there, so that, I mean, the folks in progress would probably say that usually hours of people will arrive. Right. Signs of the yeah, yeah. Do you want to see the sign? We have an extra one. No, unfortunately, I make a comment. People do not pay attention to signs. They'll walk right by them. Uh, not even read them. Yeah, and I know they put up a new sign at North Farms Road. We appreciate it. We're all frustrated. But, uh, yeah, you need some kind of yeah. Yeah. Even even people talking to people has a much bigger impact. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the, those are the. There's one in each. I mean, yeah. You, yeah. Yeah. That's great. It's people, like, yeah. People just don't pay. And, you know, Either, you don't stay, pay attention or don't. You stand there all day, and people get out of the cars and walk in with with dogs off the leash. And uh, the, the real the bigger problem is, I mean, it is a problem. It's the, the problem is the off leash dogs. The majority of dogs you see in the Carol Lake Conservation. Anyway, off leash, you go out the trail. Well, the pe people have to register their dogs, right? Mm -hmm. no. Well, you're supposed to license your dog. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah like oh, when you, you get a yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. With the when, when you get a, uh, I get a license. Sure. Yeah, and you have to renew it every, every year. Yes. Right? Yeah. So you know, how about a bright orange card? We we recommend that. The dog owners. Yeah, and the you animal control that? officer already has a, a very nice brochure. And if you can hand that out. Yeah, bright you know, big bright orange thing you know, explaining the leash law and, and uh, yeah, picking up that for your dog. But at least the landowners well, yeah, and the dog owners can't say, well, gee, I didn't know anything about that. You, you know, know, we, we uh, I and somebody else from Broadbrook talked to uh, Shayla Howe, the animal control officer, it be two years ago in the spring, and she, you know, she said she could you know, more than happy to come out. She's very cooperative. But to the extent the city directed her to spend two, uh, an hour or two each week on a weekend or whatever her hours are. Yeah. Uh, like after after late afternoon when people tend to walk their dogs after work or first thing in the morning. We could begin to have that and get a little publicity about the problem with off these dogs and the company problem with dog food. Maybe uh, doubling the existing fines. Yeah, so uh, the fines went up, and she gave a couple of tickets or warnings to people. Yeah. Uh, who, who? Sarah, how how often is our trail guy out in the in the trails? Uh, I mean, he's out. I mean, could he a be lot, a distributor but of PCs? And it's it is a it's a city ordinance. It's not a it's not a conservation area issue per se. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, he could to the extent that he does see people, he could mention it. He's not on a weekend when people are there. Mm -hmm. Most likely to be murdered. Does uh, the animal control officer is in a city vehicle, or is there some designation that says on her vehicle? I, I just saw her car. She had a. a, a a, a vehicle the other day which said animal control us. I believe it was North Hampton. So if, if if that was parked there for an hour and she walked around, you know, once or twice a week, I think that was, and maybe what if we had attached to the sign the uh, phone number for the animal control officer? 
that uh, yeah. uh, people could, if they yeah. see, hey, my dog just got attacked by an off leash dog, I, I know who to call. Yeah, uh, that, that would be helpful. I think she will get more calls. I mean, if we can hand out brochures and the, 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 the people who walk on the trails with and without dogs, and I've been walking with a dog owner actually in, in Amherst, in the Abbotson Brook Conservation Area, which is an off leash dog place in the morning. That's why, by the way, that's why yeah, Amherst started the dog park. They created this Abbotson Brook Conservation Area from dawn till 10 or 10, 11. It was an off leash area but people just didn't pay any attention to that dog poop all over the place and they just out of frustration set up their own dog park which is in the process of the city dog park yeah Amherst yeah, yeah. Yeah. Amber, Amber got a grant from the Stanton Foundation for planning oh, yeah. twenty five thousand dollars and then they got another uh grant from the Stanton Foundation for ninety percent of the construction cost. I think the high end number that we're talking about is a total a 300,000 something like that. I don't know what they finally selected, but they got that. And all that should be, uh, I'm sure they should be finished this spring, I hope. But uh, they were frustrated, particularly by the, the dog walkers leaving the filled dog bit, yeah. doggy yeah. bits, yeah. Yeah. along some the trail. Into the loop and some just leave them. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, but I've walked with people, uh, even if it's early, the dog walkers themselves, I know two people who will not walk with dogs, who will not walk their dogs in the early because the off leash dogs come up and confront them. Yeah. And, yeah. and some of the communities require you to have, even in the, uh, uh, where they have a, a leash free zone, they require the dog owner to have a, a one leash for each dog. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think if we double the fines, though, that's something that would have to go through. Oh yeah, yeah, that's the city city city. Council. yeah. yeah. And, oh, oh, you know, to the extent we get publicity, it gets in the paper and on um, on television, that would be helpful. The other, the other thing is this 1984 um, area security cameras. So, yeah. I, you know, my hearing aids don't pick up everybody's voice here. So, there, there, we've looked at this before for other issues, and there, the police department has some concerns about the way that they are used and, and not used. So that well, that may not be. Just saying, one, you know, one in the, in the parking lot, so you can put the dog owner with a license plate, so you can find the I owner. Mean, so you, that, do, you, do you remember the controversy about security cameras now, Yeah. yeah. Uh, what, about, what about seeing if they have a car? We're yeah, just getting yeah, desperate yeah, here. Yeah, I know. There's no problem. Not again. You can put fake cameras and sign that. It's, that like, it's like kids on those uh, the motorbikes that rip through conservation but, areas, there's no way you can stop it. You know, it's, it's pretty frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the trails. By the way, you're gonna, you're gonna have to do something long term about these new e-bikes going into conservation areas. I mean, it's not a problem yet. I'd be surprised if it isn't become a problem. I don't even know how it works. Yeah. 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 They're different than the electric spy cars. It's only in the sixth. You, yeah. uh, you, you, you have gradations of uh, effort. So if you want to go along and get to a hill and you want to keep your pace but go up the hill, you click it on. Yeah. But if it's only if you don't pedal, it won't go. So yeah. it's, it's an assist, not a on the motorcycle. Yeah. yeah, I know somebody who has one of the a new bike with a motor on it, and if I understand it correctly, he can put the motor on it and talk whether he's pedaling or not. And I'm sure eventually they'll well, develop. Those kind of those yeah, I'm sure they're gonna develop a bike. You know, somebody's paying for it, they'll, they'll, they'll but it's a, uh, but it's, it's going to be a problem. National Park Services is. And we've had some discussion about the, 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 the Rocky Hill uh, Greenway acquisition. There was people who want organized mountain bikers who want to make sure it was going to be allowed. Um, and uh, you know, they talked about policing themselves and all this sort of stuff. And the other hand, there were. Uh, other people in the hearing said, you know, my goal is always to go as fast as I can when I'm right. at the mountain bike. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, some, some people will respect hikers and some people will just be bombing down the trail. So about, about a month ago, there was an article in the New York Times about a incident where this happened out in the Rocky Mountains. At a, I think it was a national forest. But uh, I, I'm a park ranger, whatever his title, he was an employee on the day off. He was on his mountain bike going on, on a trail 
and, and, a, and a national forest area, a national park. I, don't, I can dig the or I'll find the Oregon Park in the past, I think. But anyway, he was going down a hill. He's going over 20 miles an hour. The, the person he was biking with uh, said he had gone ahead, went around a curve, and slammed into the grizzly bear. And the grizzly bear was startled and swatted him and killed him. Hmm. But that was a, that was a hiker, a hiker, biker. It took going too fast down the hill. He was going over to the, the the friend thought he was going over twenty miles an hour, which is pretty fast. Really would. And he went around a curve. Boom! He hits the, the grizzly. The grizzly kills him. I think it's Montana or someplace. Or the grizzly bears. Yeah. That'll solve the dogs and everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the the point is, this was a biker, and if that had been up. Uh, there was also there was a, a, a firm that did horse rides, guided horse rides in the area, and it could have been a horse, a rider on a horse. It could have been a, just a hiker. So that, but it was a park ranger, and they just uh, issued the official report with you know. Eventually, we're going to have to you know whether we have a jeep or equivalent for but a biker. They bikers. pointed out in there the National Park Service is now allowing e-bikes on some places on, on state and national parks. Well, for you, this is dog-eating grizzlies. <laughs> Go after dogs, don't have leashes. Yeah, they have to train the bears. Yeah, but getting, dogs back, without their orange tag on. Yeah. <laughs> but, but getting but, back to the dog so, problem again, yeah. please consider the issue with the getting a convert, getting a, a commercial dog walker's license, get, getting some rings. I know it's difficult, but the whole process of having hearings alerts the public, and you get you get people out. Because we, you know, we see the the dog walkers, at, the commercial dog walkers at this Gerald Lake, and uh, they got eight dogs, yeah. six dogs. Uh, yeah, somebody from the dogs. trustees I know said they have ten dogs. The commercial dog walkers. So have that, ten dogs. that wouldn't be a conservation no, commission yeah. specific action, though. I mean, that we, we can't as, yeah. as a as a conservation commission. We, we, we can't no distinguish order. between whether you own your dog or you're doing it as a business walking other people's dog. I mean, if a license process would be essentially yeah, or the license, license commission or which might have to go through the city council. Council <laughs> Nash is here. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> but we're back to grizzlies. No, we're back to licensing. Wondering these whether the council walkers. would be interested in, in requiring licenses for commercial dog walkers. Yeah, they show up the conservation areas with eight to ten dogs. And right. Let them all go. Oh. Uh, you know, half of them are on unleash, half or not. Yeah. One one of the walkers at Fitzgerald Lake is from Williamsburg, and I asked her back when the Wagon Tails dog park a couple of years ago. I said, "You need to go out there," and she said, "No, it's another fifteen minutes beyond Fitzgerald Lake, and she's coming from Williamsburg." So. And her, you know, in her business, it's time. So why does she need uh, to, to do another half hour travel well, time? How minutes? about if we, we start with um, can we get the animal control officer to uh, be visible, park a vehicle, uh, uh, walk around uh, you know, once or twice a week for an hour, uh, half an hour? So I I can inquire, um, but that's a totally separate. City department. No, no, so I through, through the police. We, so we, I'm, I'm not, and I'm not sure what, what their priorities are. I have a comment about that. Maybe one other option is we don't even need the officer. Just park a vehicle there right. for a couple hours on the busiest time and go do something else. Uh -huh. um, I think just having a vehicle would raise yeah. people's yeah. eyes and be like, holy cow. You know, the Rockwood Coalition volunteers would be more than happy to spend time with her and help educate the public. And remind people, quite honestly, people are afraid to talk to the dog hunters. They are very, very. It's like, it's like confronting hunters, you know. They, yeah, you know, right, of, right. Please. Maybe it's actually worse than confronting hunters. Yeah, they, 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 they <laughs> my dog is always. My dog is fine. Right? Yeah. Um, what about, Sarah, uh, these are city ordinance signs, but as a conservation commission, could we? Uh, append to those signs the, the animal control officer's uh, phone so people know where to call? Uh, yeah, we could do that on our full Because then we're not making any new regulation, we're just putting out public information about uh, yeah. 
who's responsible for yes. working this stuff. And, and, and she specifically said when she gets called, she can only respond to a dog bite incident. So yeah. if somebody calls her and says there's a dog off leash, whether it's in front of City Hall or in the far reaches of the so Mineral Hill. That doesn't raise to the level of. Yeah, she said. But if somebody attacks the dog, somebody knocks over a hiker, or somebody yeah. knocks over the little kid, whatever, then yeah. I assume that would be. Yeah. So we should. We should so if she's told you that she will not respond to this. To oh, yeah, no. I mean, she, she, you know, she said, and I understand that. They probably do get a lot of care from calls. And I remind you that Robert Jonas's wife broke, fell and broke her, her wrist about five or six years ago out in um, the Smith Fields. A dog uh, had, had attacked her. A rope leash dog jumped up on her while she was running. Yeah. And that's that. That is the training ground for I think the high school's cross country team. And a couple yeah, of different. Yeah, they shut it down. Yeah, the my granddaughter was on the cross country team, and she said the dogs ran out of bushes, you know, walk with. Is going on, you know, sure. it's, it's kind of a problem. And that's a place where she could really have some get, have an impact because it's still a serious problem out there. The off leash dogs, I, I try to avoid going there. It's a great place to go for walks. Yeah. So, it's not happily, not a conservation. Uh, yeah, it's not a conservation. That was not a conservation. Well, I know that. The, the, but she can still perform her function out there. To, you I, know, I, the I don't, but I don't know what type of resources they're able to devote to right. the right. issue. I mean, she's responding to like birds stuck in car drills and raccoons and trains and all, and yeah. all kinds of Cop fighting, the whole so. thing out on Florence Road right later. <laughs> so, is, is there, if, I'm, if you're if I'm at the, um, public hearings, put things in, in the public eye more than and having sign people walk right by the sign. Uh, if we were to have a hearing about, uh, as a conservation commission, about um, allowing, you know, what, how would we explain it, allowing dogs, because we could make land use regulations because dogs are not allowed, and, and that would be arguable because um, it's we're responsible for habitat protection and the wildlife. Roots in their habitat uh, that is within a purview, and if there's a lot of dog poop and dog chasing uh, of wild animals, we could argue that uh, if people aren't going to comply with the leash law, then it's uh, a violation of our responsibility to say, oh, yeah, go ahead. Um, so we would have to consider, and part of this thing about that, we would have to consider uh, whether we should continue to allow even leashed dogs. Um, at all, any dogs on conservation land because uh, so many dog owners don't respect their dog walkers. Don't that would be a can on the tree. But, I, yeah, mean, yeah. I, I know. I mean, I <laughs> would start with that. Uh, but it certainly would get people's attention. I mean, we would have to be able to take my dog anywhere, you know. That's the issue. We, we could never enforce it, just like the leash law. Yeah. Really can't well, it. well, but Mass Audubon doesn't allow any dogs. But, but the birds, the do they have more control? Because you, you go to a designated parking right. area, you're in front of staff. Yeah. If you hop out, with the no, I agree. It's, it's a lot easier for them. Yeah, to they have they have deeper pockets than than you folks, and they, but they recognize the problem. And in the spring, with the ground nesting birds, yeah. Yeah. Um, and let's face it, most of those dogs are wandering around the woods. If I had I had dogs in the past, I'd have an now. I would take my dog to the sterile ledge and let it off the leash and have a good run. We need amnesty. <laughs> <laughs> so all of us can come forward and confess. Confess and then agree that from this day well, forward we will uh, pick up we'll, the we'll be good. Yeah. And and similar to the discussion about hunting when hunters came and said, you know, my tax dollars go to the Community Preservation Act and those funds are used to purchase open spaces, I think you would get a tremendous amount of pushback from residents with dogs saying, oh, yeah. this, this is how I use this oh, conservation. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Um, sure. Yeah. Um, sure. Well, I mean, and, and, yeah, I don't think it would give us sort of the desired outcome of people being more sympathetic to the fact that there's off these dogs. It would definitely hurt the worst, but I'm not so sure. <laughs> it might have the, op the opposite intention yeah. effect. I, I, but I do think some sort of information campaign makes sense in terms of having you know, I'm a dog, get a license that you're having a brochure that, that not just talks about what the laws are, but the, the consequences of 
And the dogs uh, bother the hikers. And you, you walk out of Mr. Lake on a nice uh, late in the afternoon. People get off work on a nice fall day. They take the dogs there, certainly on the weekends. And you walk along, and you'll, between the dam and the moose lodge, you'll, you'll find uh, three or four people walking the dogs. And the majority of them off the leash. Some people hold their dogs. Some people put the leash on. Because they know their dog will run up. And, and, uh, and in fact, I, I have to call this friend of mine. He lives over in. Uh, Pine's Edge Condo. He got bit by a dog on Boggy Meadow Road uh, a couple of months ago. And um, he said he was just walking along and passed some people who had a dog off leash, and next thing he knows, the dog and the people passed him, and the dog came back and bit him in the camp. No serious harm. He's a pretty good guy about that. But that stuff does happen. I know this is out of our part, but what about increasing the licensing fee significantly and having that money to go toward something to do with dog enforcement or something with the conservation area? And I think it's only like 15 bucks for a dog license. It's the cheapest $5 a year. Yeah, make, well, not make, it 40, make it 40 make it $50. Just go. I don't think you have a whole bunch of unlicensed. Um, no, yeah. Yeah. Well, what you have is a, a group of people paying attention. The <laughs> one when I saw on that is see them, they start asking questions and they they be a receptive audience suddenly. Um, or even if the person or not compliant. <laughs> right. It would it would take you there's that right. people would just not license the yeah, dogs. Exactly. Well, a progressive violation fine, about fifty for the first offense, hundred for the second offense, hundred fifty. They have that for um, something in the city. Is that what should a violation of this for? Is it snow removal, maybe? Maybe. No, there's, there's, there's something in the city ordinance where it was a progressive fine, mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't for the, the dogs. Hey, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a statewide problem, and uh, Concord, I think, it had a, had a put, put a leash law. They changed their, their, their local regulations, and dogs were allowed to go free in certain places, and they put a leash law on it. And there was a hue and a cry, about 25%, I've been trying to track the number of dog owners, about 25% of households have dogs, I think. Something like that, 20 to 25 It's a big number. Yeah, really yeah, it's a big number, and in Concord, you thought it was the, the biggest battle since the, the British in <laughs> <laughs> They really had a major turnout, and I've got rights. I can always walk my dog there off leash and my dog behaves. It's a big problem. It's a sensitive political issue. On the other hand, you've got a new city council, several new city councilors now, so. But off leash dogs are prohibited. Oh, yeah. Prohibited everywhere. Oh, yeah. So, that, so yeah. what kind of. Take a look at Mr. Gerald Lake, you'll see it. For no, I, but a, a change, with no change is needed because that, that's already. It's there. already. Yeah, it's already it's already no changes yeah. in the regulation. So it's. What, what what to do. And I think you're right, that information and education is a piece. Uh, so, uh, Sarah, if you can check with uh, the police department and see whether the uh, uh, animal control officer uh, can, in fact, park there. Um, we, as a conservation commission, could put up our own sign um, about uh, the, uh, this is conservation land. And, uh, Dog feces and uh, off leash dogs, uh, uh, and wild ones, are uh, uh, violations of our charter. And please respect that. We could, that's not a, uh, to please obey the city leash law. We could put up our own signs there. Um, and then you know, we could include in that sign the uh, uh, performance of the dogs. You're going to have to sign, right? But she won't respond. She won't respond, that, though. She won't respond just to. Uh, yeah, we get, she's indicated she can only respond on the phone call based on the dog point. Uh, uh, the sign can't be on the kiosk. It should be right where the trail starts. Start. So people have to walk. That sign is there, yeah. Whoever, uh, I guess your your, uh, new, your fellow put it up at, at this girl Lake right at North Point Road. And um, it's. Uh, That's pretty visible. Yeah, you know, 
would be hard for someone to say. Oh, yeah, Pete yeah. Westover comes down from, if you know Pete Westover there. Yeah. yeah, and he comes down from Hatfield, or Wakefield, wherever he lives. He walks his dog there at, at, at the Moose Lodge. It's a popular place. He was a conservation officer in the industry. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> It's just a very convenient place to walk the dog. It's easy to get to, and then you walk on the little loop trail. So. Any other ideas how to get the word out there that this got to get taken seriously? Uh, no, I'm sorry, yeah. Manny, simply using the register and license of dogs. So I think yeah, that, that's probably good. That's probably a good thing. That we lease those dogs that are licensed. Yeah. If, and I like your idea that it be a brightly colored, different from yeah. the normal pamphlet we get. Or us uh, orange, like mm -hmm. She has a very nice brochure, which covers all this very well. You know. But maybe we print that brochure on yeah. bright orange paper, so it's like, oh, what's this? So right. Then, then at least that information is there. Uh, you can check to see whether she can be yeah. parking. Her Bro vehicle. Broadway. And actually, and, and I had season threat, we don't need her. We need the card that says animal control officer that looks like she's walking around. I mean, we can just get a big magnet. I have a similar story. The commission to require that you sign on the bottom of the notice of the, the, the order of conditions that you read. Then you have the conditions. And maybe if the, when the people, before they hand them the license, Read this and then it sign it. It gets done it. It. It it. It by mail. Yeah. So it, it wouldn't be able to do that. I, I, you know, it could work. The tariff, it, then it would, it would remove the option of deniability. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah. yeah. But uh, it's not practical the way that the uh, licenses are actually ready. You never show up at City Hall. Well, I assume when you get your first license, you have to get it at City Hall. And then after that, it's just being used by mail. Mm -hmm. so so they send you a little mailer. mailer. Have to set it in with a oh, maybe we got to change that. <laughs> the first time they uh, license a dog, it has to be at City Hall. Another thing we've been talking about doing is trying to get volunteers out there, teams of people, two or three people, to confront the dog owner when the dog poops in the middle of the dog. If the dog is back in the woods, and there's a lot of signs saying even though your dog poops back in the woods, you're obligated to pick it up before yeah. stepping in. Yeah. Especially when you take a picture of them. If uh, it would be, it would be one thing if if you had brought brought uh, volunteers with some kind of identifying yeah. vest or something, um, that would be another. Yeah. Kind of other other uh, other land, we might yeah have. land managers because I I went to this conference two years ago in February now and they have done that. And they get teams of people, younger people sometimes, that wear T-shirts and hats, some kind of identifying mark. It's, it's it, it it works. It's you know it's it's, it's difficult to confront people. Say, sir, you know your dog just went. Uh, listen to Molly Hale talk about it. Molly Hale wrote a dog a poem to Box Poopy. She got so frustrated. Well, um, let's at least. Uh, Try those two things. Find out about the animal control officer and uh, parking there, and uh, find out that we, uh, we talk to her. I'd be, sir, I'd be glad to call the animal control officer and, and talk to her to see whether she could have her um, pamphlet that you uh, refer to or on gray lines or some other unignorable colored paper uh, at the time when people are sent their, their new license. They get that. Right. right. Those would be at least two steps of raising yeah. the weight. And we can give out some of the brochures to people walking their dogs. You know, 90% of them always get crumpled up, thrown away. But uh, just as a reminder. Can we get those people put those political announcements on your doorstep <laughs> when they're running for office? Distribute the brochures. Yeah. <laughs> Counselor. So I, a thought to for your discussion, um, because there, there seems to be ordinance in place to actually, you know, so it gets into enforcement and information, yeah. and that um, that maybe the idea is, you know, a future CONSCOM meeting, mm -hmm. invite the animal control officer, maybe Chief Casper, 
and also uh, Pam Powers, the city clerk, because they're the ones who, and maybe, you know, just having a discussion, you know, with a brainstorming, so brainstorming, yeah. and figure out what it is, because maybe it is, you know, a bunch of broad group people, um, you know, with information provided by the city clerk and by the animal control officer, and maybe some sporadic enforcement that gives people the sense of like, you don't know when they're going to show up. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, so I suggest maybe that's, that's a way to start. And, um, yep, that's, that's a very, very good suggestion. Yeah. 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 It's my inner Jerry Budger. <laughs> <laughs> Have a discussion. <laughs> oh, she could give out a ticket for not cleaning up after your pet. That would even be better. If she hangs around out there, you know, during the day, she's going to see it. It's on a nice sunny Saturday on the fall. Yeah. What will happen? It is. It is the most maddening that when people put it in the bag and they put it in the bag somewhere. Please. They forget it on the way out. Well, as the animal, you know, <laughs> the animal control officer points out that the reason so many people fill the bags and leave there, it's a nice day or even remotely warm, and you take your dog out of your car and go someplace, you don't want to put that bag full of dog poop in your car on a hot day. Well, it's then leave it there. And they you got a dog that goes with having a dog. The, uh, what they, it, in our neighborhood, the uh, Little Brook of Greenway, uh, somebody um, arranged with, it was to sell waste, and now it's USA waste, it was bought to sell. They maintain a barrel at the end of Ward Avenue at the top of the path that goes down in the Little River. And every winter, they pick it up, and it, it, it's there to put dog poop in. The Mill River Greenway folks will pick that up? No, well, it's, it's USA. Yes, like they used to be so wet. Yeah, they, 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 some neighbor oh, talked to them. Oh, so they, they, pay, they pay them. The neighborhood yeah. pays them. Nobody pays them. They just do it as a, as a service. It's oh, really? Because yeah. they have so many clients <clears throat> in that neighborhood that, sure, we'll put an extra barrel out there. Well, those are the fellow, those are the company that took over from Alternative Recycling. Oh, they, 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 they took over they to so many uh, yeah. trash companies. Their trucks yeah. are everywhere. Percentually, 90% of the Shining the truck. Yeah. yeah. The problem we've talked about, and people regularly raise the issue of putting a, a waste disposal basket just for general trash at, at North Farms Road entrance. But there's so many people who just litter. People come in their candy wrappers, soda cans, and we pick this stuff up all the time. You may want to reach out to it's USA Recycling. Yeah, we can help to that. See if they'd be willing to or the pedal people, for that matter. Yeah, because if, they, if anybody goes by there to collect trash in that neighborhood, it wouldn't be that big and hardship for them to yeah. just have an extra one after the girl. Now, what that does is <laughs> it puts a lot of dog feces in the landfill. In the landfill, sure. Which does. is, uh, we argue that the landfills aren't built for that. And, yeah. Uh, so, you know, if I can just be, <laughs> take a minute. Uh, last year, I just, I, well, I just see, happened to come across several Canadian cities are trying to do. Because they have very nice, pristine parks. They're fairly sizable the cities, 100,000 and up. And they have uh, receptacles there for regular trash and the cans and the bottles and something else. And then for dog poop. Well, the dog poop was ending up in its bag in the regular trash yeah. container. And they, one, one city actually got to the point where they had a separate facility and they were uh, had a very high tech solution to the problem. We were paying somebody $30 an hour to open the, the doggy bag with a half with scissors. Oh. <laughs> That's not enough. <laughs> I mean, if it's in compostable bags, it can be composted, but I don't think there's any facilities locally no. that no. are able to accept those. No, and I don't think that uh, no, I, you'd have to have a separate facility. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, the bags we use are, are are supposed to break down. But they're if they're going in a landfill. Yeah, but even in the landfill, they're supposed to break down. You know, within not fifty thousand years, whatever, but within a few years, they claim that in their advertising. But the F, the FTC went after them because all these companies were saying, "Oh, our bags are bio." So what have we agreed that we will actually? Sarah's going to talk to the police about that. Great, thank you.
parking there. And I'm happy to talk to her a little bit with so, uh, about see getting the brochures to be unignorable when you might put it in the mail. Yeah. And I can look into the brief session. Yeah, yeah. 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 In, looking for a uh, brainstorming session. Yeah, I, I think it would be beneficial for you folks to talk to her because she, you know, she has uh, seen it all. I think, yeah. and she may have some idea, further ideas on how to pursue this that would may bear fruit. Maybe we'll get the police involved and so on, and get their perspective on. Yeah, how that's cool. Do, it's a good call. Yeah. Keep the work here, uh, each by each. I mean, yeah. to a large extent, it's just a, a resource management issue. Like they have a, she has a. So many things that she needs to deal with. And mm -hmm. Even if this is constantly at the top of the list, you know, every time somebody Same calls with an emergency. Same police and jaywalking. They're not going to go out looking for it, but they see it. They might. Yeah. Well, they public awareness um, so that you actually have people who have been attacked by dogs. So. Oh, and, and, and also explaining the, the, you know, the reason for the regulations, is particularly in the conservation lines. Yeah, an apex predator. Yeah. 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 They would normally be. So I don't think most dog owners think of yeah, yeah, that that way. Well, that could be something that maybe the brainstorming session would yeah. uh, help to prepare. They so, said, yeah, you could be uh, the police, the conservation commission, uh, city councilor, uh, somebody, you know, saying, oh, this is a problem, and then get the gazette. Uh, and we could also do a um, editorial piece in the Gazette. Mm -hmm. We could do an editorial piece in the Gazette about uh -huh. why yeah. it's important. So yeah, maybe with steps like that, by next spring we can start to make a dent in the uh, begin to. Yeah, I, I suspect. I, we have no numbers, of course, but I suspect that the number of people walking dogs off leash. And all the conservation areas continues to rise. I know it's a big problem with the state park. It's the, one of the largest areas of complaint. People go into the state park for their family on the weekend and the off leash dogs. Yep. Nope, that's, that's right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming in, David. The, uh, you guys are, are you know, we talked about resources. You guys do the stuff you do. With, Supposed to be the power customer. Noise. <laughs> <laughs> it would be not as anywhere near what it is. So yeah. you, you are really the arms and legs of the. Yeah, when I go around and hike in other places and go to other conservation areas and other communities, I, uh, you know, you can see how how hard people work, and it's, it's a constant. Yeah. It's a constant effort. Well, in Amherst, there's 2.75 FTEs in there. As their resources dedicated to just the conservation commission, we have 45. Uh, uh, we at Tom is half time. Uh, um, uh, we have never ending work for Tom, but I am not full time for the conservation. No, so it's 0.75. Oh, I thought you were 0.5. For us. Uh, well, so, yeah, so it's one equivalent. Yeah. So yeah, we have one. Anyway, Everest got more than we do. Um, yeah. Um, and so that we're we're somewhat even more limited than they are. But, uh, well, I'm going to be curious how you, the new you, dog, you guys make up for this. Dog park works out. How is that thing anyway? That, that, that private one is, I don't hear anything about that anymore. How about I'm trying to. It hasn't, it hasn't opened yet. Yeah, it hasn't opened yet. The one up on uh, Glendale Road. Glendale Road, yeah. But who's going to pay to take their dog home? I mean, they could just go to a conservation area. Some, some will. Yeah, but so it will probably be the more responsible. Yeah. 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 All right, thank you. Well, thank what else you we got? Good night. Good night. Um, two uh, updates uh, on emergency uh, certifications. Uh, I issued an emergency uh, certification uh, to the DPW uh, to breach uh, Beaver uh, Dam uh, on Turkey Hill Road. Um, see you, Jim. Uh, see you guys. Uh, this was, um, there's a, it's, it's a man made dam that's part of the conservation area. Does anyone remember where Andy Chambers' house? Yeah, used to be. So it, it's just uh, east of there, and the, the beavers have been preparing for the winter. With the cold snap, it was starting to overtake the road. Um, uh, so DPW mm -hmm. wanted to take care of it. So we, before, yeah, before it was frozen. Turkey Hill Road. Road. Turkey Hill Road. Okay. Um, and we, the dam has never been a problem before. This is the, the first time anything has happened. I don't remember seeing the dam. Is it up to Pittsburgh? Uh, it's, it's about halfway up. Road, there's a little in holding uh, where Andy Chambers used to live, and it's it's just.
just be different. Um, and I will be issuing an emergency certification for DPW to shore up the Pine Street Bridge, which Mass DOT found after an inspection is a very important condition. So that they need to install some log curbing to over the yeah. Yeah. I'm not surprised that that's a bridge that has yes. the down by the uh, the most, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so there, there was no place to put the um, the shoring on, on either the bank or the bridge yeah. abutment, so they had to put it directly in, in, in the, the, the river. river. Yeah. Um, yep. Do you yeah, need us to vote, or is it just information? No, that's just an update. I can, I can do it that well. So, but if anyone has concerns, any idea of when they're going to do this? Or uh, as soon as go? possible. Uh, they're they're trying to get a contractor on board. Next year. So we can do it when we water work. Yeah. <laughs> there were limited um, options for contracting. <laughs> so it's sort of like uh, the I 91 bridges. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yep. So when the bridge falls into something, the land off, it doesn't yeah. go very far. <laughs> <laughs> it just falls a couple inches. I wonder how many bridges around the country are going to be. Like, there's some places that have the Mass River Bridge, but yeah. you know, a lot of people were killed. It just, it just collapsed. Yeah. And it apparently has been moving and making noises for two years before <laughs> it finally got in What the hell did you do? Well, we didn't yeah. have the money, the you know, mistake, landing the fence, and it's all finger pointing. But, uh, uh, I think this stays like the number of all the states. Five from the bottom five or five from the top. top. And being the worst <laughs> of the infrastructure from bridges and roads. Yeah. Right. Rhode Island's yeah. top of the list. Rhode Island tops the list. They have the worst roads around. I, I went on a site visit with um, some mass DOT personnel for some work that they'll be coming in with a permit application for probably in spring um, at the, the clover leaves on Route 5. We walked under the, the bridges that were short of the cribbing, and you know, I, I you drive under it, but you don't really take right. the time to stop and, and look. They're, it's really frightening. Yeah. The condition that those are in. Yeah, the girders are almost rusted through. Yeah. And, uh, they forgot about boil linseed oil when they uh, did the it's supposed to be bridge maintenance uh, 101 every winter. Well, I guess the, the technology of the time was limited, also. You know, those were built in the early 60s um, and it wasn't even so much the concrete as the rebar underneath that was yeah. causing the concrete to rot from the inside out. From the inside out? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think with new bridges they put fire protection on them because they yeah. are just what they need so they don't rust. Well, the salt would be start spreading the concrete so for all 91 bridges would be vulnerable. So, um, the last question is when we get clarification about the uh, Onassa parcel, um, about what they want to fund it, should we use that as a, an opportunity to, uh, we have to have a hearing about it, and we could face changes. In some ways, it seems like my master trouble. Yeah, I mean, why wouldn't I mean, why wouldn't we just do a parcel by parcel? Right. Part of this and really it's only not, to, um, not opening, yeah, not, not a land use regulation broadly about conservation. No, it's, it's parcel by parcel. Yes, parcels come yeah. out. Yeah. But because that, re so a public hearing is required for each parcel. Uh, oh. I mean, I mean so if we took on this parcel and what they weren't allowed, we'd have to have a public hearing. Should we file it? Uh, but not that, not that includes a change in the land use regulation. So the commission oh, acquires see. property all the time, but there's yeah. it, there's no difference between those parcels and, right. and so others. So that one the market market. Yeah. So how would we handle it if we acquired it under this agreement with this person, and then there was a public problem, like they there was a public issue that generally has a problem with hunting? Then then how then what do we do? We've already owned it. So do we have to have the hearing as Part of the decision. Just maybe part of the acquisition. 
Yeah, and let me check if there are more what he's looking for. And what the issues would be. And the city did acquire a, a parcel at, um, at Fitzgerald Lake where it was required that hunters be allowed. But that wasn't part of, they, they came up on the city council floor. That wasn't part of the discussions of the acquisition. Yeah, that was in the blue zone. Yeah. yeah. Are there different types of, of ways a city can acquire land? Meaning if something isn't conservation land, but it's some other type of city-owned land, would that get out of that? Uh, it, it wouldn't in this case because he, the uh, Mr. Minister is looking for the, the conservation protection for tax purposes to make sure that it is actually permanently protected. Mm -hmm. But if it were under general city ownership, But he's not just looking for uh, the restriction, he's looking for actually a little Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll look into that online. Yeah, because I guess I'm uh, having done that big messy hearing a few years back with the change of land use regulations. It was as if we were considering hunting on conservation land. Yeah, I mean, yeah. which it yeah. which it was at that point, yeah. but this is clearly a and so this is not because hunters have been coming forward with petitions for this being changed the the rules being changed. So we need to do that. In this case, since we've adopted uh the land use proposal, why don't we just do parts of that proposal? Uh, I think it's a good uh, narrowing of scope that yeah. should allow us to say, okay, well because then if if we have a hearing it's about that specific post out parcel. We're going to get the rubbish, maybe, but we're not going to get people all over town who need firearms. And so that's a thing to make this student land parcel. Sure. And I think the discussion will be much simpler in this scenario. Like, well, we either take on the property or we don't. Right. What does the public think about that? And then Rocky Bell will walk out. I got maybe 20 calls about this possibility of hunting there from people who had hunted in the past and were told. And I don't know how many people are just going out and not following. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, but we, we 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 now own that, right? We have that uh, not the golf course. We own, the but the other part. We're working on the golf course. I know yes. we're working on it, but we never had a hunting specific uh, discussion. We did not, so it's not allowed. Currently. Oh, because that was not historically allowed. Well, it it is, but we haven't had. Okay. So we, the land use regulations. And, and then that, a, that was not, unlike the Alaska parcel, it was not a condition of no. the deal. No. Okay. That's, that's the so hunting season is coming up and people are wondering. Yes. I, I suspect some people just want to do it. Yeah, yeah people are yeah. Don't ask that up. Yeah. Sure. Well, they drew a line on the trees. I didn't know I was supposed to. <laughs> that was in the month before they were doing it. Here are the shots. Uh, Going on up there right now. Okay. I'm one of them running up there and there's one of them uh, stuck. So I'm going to run up to the other road. And do we need to be on the road? No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? All right. So we're next two weeks of Thanksgiving. It is. So we're. How did that happen? Uh, anyway, yeah. So that means, uh, what's the day in December? December, well, wow. Yeah. I'm not quite positive what that's going to be. Well, what's the difference? Yes, uh, although they changed their transects, so going out to verify the registration is a challenge. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And Dewey we'll Court that. is kind of how it Uh Dewey Court is on the agenda, uh, but I'm not sure if they will be requested. There, no, so there's zoning board finding was appealed. Yeah. So they didn't see it fit to move forward with permit until yeah, they were probably just continue it until we get because if they don't have the, the zoning, then they wait for you. I mean, so the zoning relief was granted um, from was from the ZBA, but it was a butter appealed the uh, yeah. ZBA's finding. Does that go through the mass court system, or is that a, like a DEP thing? No, that goes through the mass court. That could take, yeah, a year.
<coughs> I was kind of surprised that the neighbors gave up on that. So you didn't come to the planning <laughs> commission. I, I went to that. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. just and um, there's probably an hour and fifteen minutes, hour and a half spent on this with neighbors. Uh, <coughs> I mean, ultimately, it came down to the you know, close-in housing, the, uh, the conservation special land, special conservation. Yes. You couldn't locate those, the buildings anywhere else. You couldn't slide them away right. from the tree. Uh -huh. So they, they, they covered all of that. Um, uh -huh. okay. and so I think uh, at this meeting, they just yeah. had a couple folks that just wanted to make sure the trees weren't going to be cut down between the condos. And, mm -hmm. and, the facility. and then the planning commission did um, request some changes, some plantings along the back fence so that the, the back of butter just doesn't see the wall. Um, good. There's a lot of discussion about. <laughs> right. Well, that's good. Uh, Mike, what have you to go? Um, yeah, I kind of figured where the tree woman didn't show up to things that quieted down. Right. Yeah, yeah. Since the planning commission was approved. Is that a tree commissioner or something? Oh, Lily? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the force of nature. And dealt with. Don't give up. No. <laughs> All right. Okay. Are we adjourned? Yes, we're adjourned.